In this episode I'm going to repair a ball chain switch, a four position switch that's used for a ceiling fan to select between high, medium, low and off. And yes, I could go and buy a new switch and replace it. It would be a heck of a lot easier. There's only four wires, but hey, we don't do easy on this channel. We fix broken parts like this. So as you can see, the ball chain switch, which normally hangs out of the right side of this uh, fan control, is missing. So first, I'm going to uh, remove the screws that hold the switch control assembly on now basically there's three screws but only one actually has to be removed the other two I just have to loosen them slightly and then it will rotate um, turn it slightly and it'll lift down and this whole unit actually unplugs so I can just lift this whole uh, reversing assembly and uh, speed control assembly off and take it into the workbench to work on it so I'm just loosen off the screws and uh, then we'll remove it I got my light on there so I can see what the heck I'm doing because it's at the ceiling, it's not the brightest place, and um, I'm taking these screws out of a black fixture. So black on black is a little bit tough to see when there's not a lot of light. So that's why I've got the light there, just so I can see what I'm doing. But we just removed the, the, the cover assembly. And as you can see, two of the screws are slotted, so I don't have to actually remove them. And then the, slot, then the assembly lifts down and unplugs. Okay, at this point, the speed control switch just unscrews. And there's the switch. It has four wires on it. And these wires here are, I don't know what these are for. These are probably for remote of some type. But they're, they were bagged off, so I, I'm not worried about those. Those are for something else. Maybe remote, remote. I'm thinking probably remote uh, direction or something. Anyway, um, there's the capacitor on this motor. You can see this. The three speeds are controlled by changing which leads of the capacitor are connected to it. But what I need to do is I need to find a switch. Actually, before I even go looking for a switch, I'm going to see whether I can actually repair this one because I think if I if I play my cards right, I should be able to pop this thing apart and reconnect the chain that's come off it, unless it's broken internally. So let me just try popping the switch apart. The thing is it's plastic so I don't want to break it. It's always a good idea to film what you're doing when you're taking apart a part like this switch so that when it comes time to put it back together, if you forget the way that it came apart it uh, you can go back and review the video it's very useful and I actually had to do it in this case when it came time to put this switch back together okay there's the switch and this is where the actuator when you pull the chain it moves this little cog in the middle so I'm wondering whether I can pop this apart and actually reconnect the chain let's just go get the broken chain Be aware the spring is under tension, so when you take this thing apart, if you're not careful, you're going to lose the spring. Because the spring is under tension that's in here. And that's the hardest part of putting it back together, is actually getting the spring in and getting, getting it wound back under tension while putting the switch back together. That's actually the hardest part of this entire repair. Okay, there's a little spring in here. And of course the chain that broke. Let's see if I can put the chain back in here because I think it just it just slips in place. It will be a little bit shorter than it was for sure because as you can see what happened is the, the little ball chain just broke. But I may be able to uh, I may be able to make this work. It's just going to be a little shorter. We'll try. Oh, 
There we go. There's the broken piece out. We'll just uh, try, I'm just going to uh, try and put this new piece back in, or what remains of it. And uh, see whether I can get this switch to go back together and work. Okay, there's that piece. I'll come up with another tactic. I'm going to try and uh, I don't know if this will, whether this is what this is made out of. If it's made out of copper, I should be able to solder to it. I don't know what type of metal it's made out of, but I'm going to see if I can uh, join the two broken pieces together just to give me a little more of a tail because I really need that extra length. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to buy a new switch. So I'm going to try and solder this together. And once I can get solder to stick to it, I'm going to reinforce it by wrapping some some wire around it just to give it some extra strength and then see if I can get it to go back together <clears throat> but I really do need the extra length of wire or, or of chain or it's not going to work so first of all I'll see whether this will take solder or not I don't know what type of metal it's made out of if it's a uh, you know, if it's brass or something then Obviously, solder won't stick to it, but and it looks like solder will stick to it, which is good. So the trick here is to, uh, it needs tension on the spring. That's why I had to extend it. Otherwise I wouldn't have enough uh, ball chain to work with to actually wind enough tension on it. So I had to put the broken piece back on. But anyway, I got to wind it around one turn and fish the ball chain out through the uh, access hole and then give it some tension and hold it in place while I'm putting the cover on which is actually it's not as tricky as you would think and this actually didn't take well it took me a while to get to this point but uh, the full repair on this thing took me less than 30 minutes start to finish so it wasn't that big a deal and it, it was faster actually to fix the switch than it would have been to get in the car and drive out to the hardware store and buy a new one and come back the, the, the time it took to put this thing back together and I've never taken one of these switches apart before so it really wasn't that difficult this is the hardest part here is getting the ball chain fished through so I just took it apart if you want one more time here I figured okay we'll try this this might make it a little easier so the spring fits into a slot on that on the middle uh, on the middle post there and then the other end of the spring fits into a slot on the uh, actual actuator. That's why it's always a good idea to videotape anything you do so that if you forget how something come apart you can always review it I had this base plate upside down it goes in this way not the other way and I was trying to figure out why this thing would not snap together and that's the reason because I had the base plate upside down but now I have the base plate the right way up and it snaps right in just like that now this little lever works as it's supposed to and that will work even if I take off the 
place where I soldered it together, I could snap this other piece back on there. It would be a shorter chain, but it would work because there is enough slack. Cool. Let's uh, put the switch back together now. If only I can remember which way it came out. Oh, like that. It goes together like that. Yes. I do believe that the switch is back together and I should make it work. Put the switch in there like that. I'm going to uh, just reinforce this little splice here that I did. I'm just going to wrap some some uh, wire around these two ball chain pieces here just so that it doesn't come apart. Okay, I just wrapped the piece of wire around there just to give it a little more support. I just used a piece of wire from an old, um, I think it was a leg of a resistor or something, right? But uh, good enough. Just to give it some support so the switch will, so when I pull it, it'll turn the fan off and on or change the speed. Let's go uh, put it back together and see what it does. No, it's not that there's no sound here. It's just that uh, other people in the house were yapping on the phone, talking in such a loud voice that uh, the microphone was picking up every word that was being said. So in respect of privacy of other people in the house, I'm going to shut the sound off and you can just watch me put this thing back together and, and I'll talk to you from my studio. So put the plug back in to connect the switch assembly to the fan and just line up the slots on two sides of the housing and tighten the screws up and then put in the third screw that doesn't have a lock on it that two of them have a lock on it and the third one doesn't that's so that if they weren't tight it can't rotate and fall down so the one screw actually stops it from rotating so there's the third screw in there as you can see i'm not using an extra any extra light here and the camera is in high gain it's quite quite grainy because there's not a lot of light in this this is in my media room and that's actually a, a, a dark gray uh, paint that's in the room here it's my tv room so now I've got the screw tightened up. Let's uh, test the fan and see if it works. This uses a four position switch. That's the low speed there. And the next speed will be off, followed by high and then medium. Okay, that should be off. Yeah, that's off. So it should be high speed, medium speed, low speed. So high speed. Medium speed. Low speed. So now you know how to fix one of these ball chain switches, whether it's used in a light fixture or a ceiling fan. They're all the same. They're all really easy to fix. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon.